With the help of this old test box and uh, air-cooled condensing unit, we're going to show you the perfect charge of refrigerant and how to gauge it very easy, very simply. This is our little air-cooled condensing unit. Uh, very simple, very basic. It's not one that's uh, available in the U.S. Uh, we have the, the suction gas comes back into the compressor where it's compressed up into a high-pressure hot gas that goes off to the air-cooled condenser in this case, but it could be water-cooled or keel-cooled. And from there, it's condensed down into a liquid and comes out on this thin tube here. And this is now liquid at hopefully room temperature. That goes off to a point where it turns into the capillary tube, which is a very tiny orifice uh, in a little tube, which looks like a piece of wire, but it is in fact a tube. And that, after a while, going round and round to the suction line, actually goes inside it. And from there on, we just have the one line the suction line with the capillary tube inside it. That gives subcording to the liquid going through the cap tube and also a little bit of uh, warming up of the suction gas coming back uh, to make the compressor more efficient. Uh, the excess tubing is coiled up horizontally and then there is a section of the insulation only about a meter and that is there to prevent any condensation issues from cold copper coming out into a warm area. This is our box, top loading old box, and inside we have a 130F evaporator plate mounted, and you can see it's on the standoffs, the three quarter standoffs that which are supplied with the evaporators, and it is uh, at least an inch away from the top of the box, and that allows warm air to be circulating over the top of the, the plate and back down the back and freeing all the way down the back so we're using both surfaces of the evaporator. The tubing coming in here you can see then transitions and we take the capillary tube out again and into this one here and so this is our feed into the plate and then it goes into the um, tubes, the, the um, channels rather, that go all the way backwards and forwards and end up as one tube, one channel that goes and that's the discharge so we want the charge to be such that the liquid refrigerant is all finished here and it's all evaporated bored away at a very low temperature and then goes back to gas so from here on we shouldn't see any icing and we don't we just see sweating on the line that's going back to the compressor so that's the perfect charge in, in this uh, system it can't get much better than that no matter what the weight of refrigerant put in there or what the pressures are. This is the effect of an undercharged uh, an evaporator where there's not enough liquid in the system to boil off completely through the evaporator. You can see coming in there's frost on the inlet tube coming in here and then through the, the initial channels but the liquid soon runs out and down the bottom here is boiled out and it's just gas now, cold gas. So this end of the plate is just wet and sweating where the rest of the plate is frozen and this top piece here, which is the uh, exit tube, is still frozen, but that's because of the effect of the tube next to it, which is the inlet tube. So that's what a partially charged system would look like. Let's look at a slightly overcharged system, and the first thing to notice is that there is now frost on the line inside the box, on the copper line, going back to the compressor, and that means there's still liquid refrigerant boiling away evaporating inside the line and having a refrigeration effect going back to the compressor. Uh, the plate appears to be normal, I mean it's got uh, frost on it so and it's still cooling but it's going to be a lot less efficient because the pressures are higher and therefore the temperature that the refrigerant is boiling away at is going to be higher than if it was properly charged. The other thing to note is the sound of the evaporator and you probably can't hear this but in a uh, properly charged system it's like a tinny gurgling sound it's very distinctive whereas this one is uh, more like a running stream just liquid running through on the outside of the box we can see now the tubing after the about one meter of standard insulation that's only there to stop cold copper coming out and dripping into a copper locker or whatever but instead now we got frost on that copper tube going half the way back to the compressor and it ends in a very distinctive line 
and uh, it's a, a basically a knife edge line. You can you can see that there, and that's where the last of the refrigerant is boiling away, the liquid refrigerant. And from there on, it goes back to the compressor as uh, as normal, and the compressor looks normal. So uh, the signs are there, though. That's the frost line being uh, too far outside the box, and that will make the system less efficient, but still working. If it's uh, far too much refrigerant in the system, then you'll have something like this, and that is uh, the result of adding insulation where it's not needed, and that covers up the problem, and, uh, and you keep adding refrigerant thinking that it's a lack of refrigerant until you get to this situation, which is, uh, is uh, dangerous for the system and causing problems, and will cause problems later on.